me? Yes, 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 yes. Go back to the first screen. I love when technology works the first time. That never happens. I'm telling you, girl, like we were, I was so nervous about it because I'm not very good at, at the technology myself. Um, so, girl, we are so, so grateful that you are on here. Like, I'm, you can tell the story. I don't even know if you know it, how long I've been after you to try and do this. Since <laughs> I know. Um, and the whole reason I did this, and you teach this a lot, is I don't, I really don't, it's not for me. Like, I am... I don't know if anybody's, I've said this before, has seen the movie, it's called Shawshank Redemption. And they're in prison and they're doing a job on a roof, on a tar roof, they're roofing it. And Andy Dufresne hears the guards talk and he walks up to them. They're about to throw him off the roof and he helps them. And they said, what do you want in return? And he said, all I want is a couple bottles of suds for my, my fellow prisoners. And the next scene, he's sitting in the corner with a smile ear to ear. He doesn't even drink watching all the guys drink and you could just see how happy he was for them and that's how i feel about you coming on here for the team i am i've got goosebumps sorry um <laughs> well, i'm super you. grateful you came on uh what i what i think we want to do is we're going to let you share and i want you to bring it real like you always do um there's a lot of uh, slacking off going on there's a lot of people having second thoughts there's a lot of people that are you know not getting results because they're not doing what needs to be done um, and then there's a lot of people having success and doing the deal. So if you could share on stuff like that, and then I promised the team that we could maybe ask you some questions at the end. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to you, girl. You know, Jana, partner with uh, okay. MDC. Take it away. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, thank you guys for having me. I love doing these Zoom calls. This is like the favorite, my favorite part of my job for sure. I say job, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> I'm unemployable. Nobody can hire me. <laughs> but um, you guys, uh, Chris asked me many, many months in a row to do this. <laughs> so and here's what happened is I didn't see his Facebook message for a long time. And then I finally saw it. And it was like, okay, reach out to me here. So we finally got it done. So you guys should, you know, give Chris a round of applause <laughs> for getting this to happen because the communication was a little challenging at first. So, you know, you guys are very fortunate to have such an amazing leader that is, you know, putting this together for you guys and, and leading you guys every single day. So, which brings me to my next point. So this isn't a presentation, <laughs> you know, this isn't for prospects. This is, we're going to get down and dirty, nitty gritty when it comes to leadership. So that's what I'm here to talk to you guys about. And this has really been on my mind a lot lately. I've been actually reading the Leadership book by John Maxwell. So I'm always reading something new because I know if I don't, then my mindset starts to trail off, you know? And I actually read a really good quote um, from John Maxwell. And he said, when people are left to fill in the blanks themselves, they do so negatively. So that kind of happens to us, I think, in, in leadership as well. And even just in network marketing, if you don't identify as a leader yet, you will probably someday soon. But um, if we aren't in control of our own minds, right, then we are opening up the doors for negativity to creep in. So I'll get on to that topic a little bit later. But what I wanted to bring to you guys was just a few things that I've been writing down for from the book that I've been reading and studying so heavily the last past week. So we in MLM, you guys, we get this idea that we somehow have to become people pleasers, <laughs> right? Like we have to try to get everybody to like us. You guys feel like that sometimes like you're in network marketing, right? So you're on Facebook, you're constantly competing for attention between even other leaders in the same company and also outside of the company as well. It's a competitive world out there. And we think that if we are the nicest and we have the most people like us, that is somehow going to translate into amazing leadership. But I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. And I, for one, have never been very good at people pleasing, <laughs> okay? For one, I've tried, okay? But I'm not very good at it and I do have a mouth on me. <laughs> so, you know, for me, I'm the kind of person that if I see a critical error in, in your game, like I'm gonna point it out to you because I want you to get better. 
You know, I'm not going to just say, keep trying, keep going, you know, and just letting the people go crazy themselves because they don't have any real direction. Being a leader is being able to guide people and tell them the truth that they may not want to hear. Right. So we have this perception in network marketing that we have to. And I'm not saying be unkind by any means. I'm not saying, you know why, Jim, you're not succeeding? <laughs> because you're trash. I'm not suggesting that at all, obviously. But what I'm saying is it doesn't behoove us as leaders to stay quiet and sweep issues under the rug when those are the very things that are going to help us level up ourselves as leaders in, in this game of network marketing. So leadership's got very little to do with people pleasing. In fact, sometimes the opposite is true. So John Maxwell in his book, Leadership, was giving an example that he had, he was signing a book for this guy, right? He came up to him and the book that the guy brought him was 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. I actually have it back here someplace. And he said, you know, John, after he was finished signing, of course, he said, I don't agree with all of your laws in this book. There's one law I don't agree with. And John said, that's fine. <laughs> like, that's okay. And he didn't address it or ask, you know, any further than that. He just said, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, you know, you don't have to agree with everything in the book. And the guy got annoyed by that response and said, I don't think you heard me. I don't agree with all of the things you put in this book. I don't think that all of these laws should be laws. I disagree with one of your principles. And he said, I, I heard you and, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and again, the third time he, he said it again, he's like getting frustrated that John's not acknowledging or engaging in the, in the fight that this guy's trying to, you know, instigate. And he said, you know, here's the situation and, and why I'm not addressing this the way you probably think I should. There are people that disagree with the law of gravity. Okay. But that doesn't mean that it's not true right? Because if you're falling off of a cliff, you're going to soon identify that maybe this law is true, right? You don't have to agree because, you know, part of being a leader is, is just that. You're being a leader. You're not a clown. You're not a people pleaser. It's not about having to, to change necessarily the direction you're, you're guiding people just to make them happy. Now, if he was probably a typical any other author out there, he would engage in the feedback because he'd be worried about his reviews and that sort of thing. But John actually identifies as a leader. He has had real life leadership experience in his life. And because of that, he knows the principles. They're tried and true. Just like our, our book, we always talk about Think and Grow Rich, right? These are success principles, right? So some people are like, I don't agree with that. My church doesn't agree with that. Or my philosophy doesn't agree with that, whatever. That's fine, but over 500 successful people of the day were interviewed, and this is the formula that it came out to be. So there's no point in arguing about things, about facts that are gonna help us get to the next level. We just have to understand that it's just a matter if we want to accept them, we wanna keep it simple, we wanna be coachable, and carry that through to our own you know, organization as well. So. You cannot bring out the best in people by making them happy. Just that's just the way it is. Could you imagine trying to raise your own children? Let's just think about this for a minute, right? We're always trying to make our children happy, which as parents, some of us have a tendency to do, right? We want to see our children happy, but when they are bad, right? Or they're going off the deep end or they're doing some completely asinine, you know, we have to get these children back in line right and if you're sitting there thinking well i just let my kids you know run amok and do whatever they want well then you have a leadership problem in your house right i mean you're going to have a bunch of little tyrants that are rebelling in your own house <laughs> so it, the same principles kind of apply in leadership to this time to this day right and that's because you're a leader you're not a, a clown right we're not here just to put on a performance we're here to help guide people and add value to their lives so that we can help guide them to the next level of wherever they're at and everybody's at a different stage part of being a leader is being able to identify the stages at which our people are at and go back and try to lift them up the mountain right because you know and i actually have this later on in my notes but i'm just going to say it now but well, part of us think that being a leader is the person that gets to the top first, right? 
And the person that's standing on top of the mountain shouting down at everybody, hurry up, get up here. The view's awesome. <laughs> Look at my new car. Look at my house. Don't you want this too? Hurry up, get up here. That's not being a leader, okay? That's, that's leveraging people beneath you to elevate yourself. And there's no, there's no room for selfishness in leadership. Leadership is going down the mountain and lifting the backpacks and the, the packs that the people are carrying and lifting the load and pushing them up the mountain the, to help them get to the top. Some people are stuck way down at the bottom. Some people are stuck in the middle. Some people are stuck towards the top and they don't even realize how close they are. Our job as leaders is to identify where our people are at, where they are stuck and help them push, push them further so that they can get to the top with you. It's not a race. Leadership is not about a race. It's not who gets to the finish line first. And I realize that in our industry, we have this emphasis on rank advancement, right? And as soon as somebody hits a really big rank, well, they end up in business for home and bam, now they got that edification over here and over here. But what's not told enough is the team that took that person to that level, right? Leadership is all about your team. And there is no way around that at all. And if your team is not succeeding, eventually your success won't be there either, right? So we have leaders that say, well, you know, I used to, I used to produce, you know, I used to have results. You know, back in 2018, everybody had results. You didn't even have to try. You just said CBD and everybody signed up, right? That was nice back then, wasn't it? <laughs> but now, okay, CBD is very common. The conversation's already out there. Even doctors are talking about it. The media is talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. And because of that, all kinds of companies and competition have rushed to the marketplace. Now people ask me all the time, aren't you worried about that? They've got the newest, latest technology, <laughs> whatever. And I'm like, I am not worried about that at all because if anybody's got the latest technology, it's us. You know why? Because we are King Kong in this space. Whether anybody wants to admit that or not, we are number one worldwide. Why don't you see us on the media? Because we decline the damn interviews every time, every time they call uh, us on our phones and every time they knock on our door, we decline it. Why would we want the spotlight when we have a really good thing going on right now? Yes, we're number one. Does the whole world know that? No, because the whole world is watching um, commercials between Mori episodes and, and soap operas on the TV. They're watching those commercials thinking that's the truth, right? I can't fix stupid. But what I can do is tell you that if anybody is going to have the best technology, of CBD, in, in CBD or out, it's gonna be our company. And the reason why is because we've made the commitment to engaging the science community. We've made the commitment to leveling up our products as we need to and as we should. You know, we had a few people say, well, we don't like the ingredients over here. I wanna tell you something about that because it pisses me off and we're keeping it real. Chris said I could, so here we go. Let's talk about that for a second. Well, I don't like there's an ingredient in relief cream. I heard that rumor. And you know what? We, you want to know how we responded? We took it out. I don't like that ingredient in bath bombs. Fine. We took it out. Guess what's coming soon? Whoops, I told you. But here's the difference between our company and everybody else's company. We actually freaking listen to you guys. <laughs> we actually hear you. Okay? And it may seem like we're not doing anything because we don't have thousands of conversations a day we do but maybe we didn't get to your message yet right but we hear the consensus and we make adjustments accordingly when we see that there's a demand for a certain product we go to work when we see there's a demand for a certain marketing system or certain capture pages or whatever it is in leadership whatever you guys need what we do is we go to work we go to work for you and I'm not here to toot my own horn as a leader, but that's what leaders do. We listen to you guys, and now we can't meet all of your needs because some of you guys would, if we took your suggestions, we would be out of business. I'm just saying, <laughs> you think they're good ideas, but <laughs> we have to look at it from a high level perspective at all times. We have to look at all angles of the chessboard to make our moves. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, 
If you are sitting here feeling any kind of doubt or fear about your business or our business as a whole, let me just tell you, those are just thoughts. And we are in complete control of that. Just so you know, you may think you're not, but you are absolutely in control of that. You may be experiencing a temporary loss, a temporary dip in volume, a temporary setback, a temporary loss someplace in your business or in your home or in life, or maybe something you know crazy is going on, you're about to lose your home. I've been in all those situations before. I've been in every single one of them. I lost every single thing that I owned, except for my car. My car was a Ford Fusion, which I could barely make payments on, and I would tell you, the only reason I got this stupid car was because I thought I was going to have to become an Uber driver. <laughs> it was a hybrid. You want, to, you want to talk about keeping it real? Like, I've been where you are. And because of that, I know what it takes to get out of the ruts that we get ourselves in. And I can tell you 99% of it is right here. Do you want to know how I got myself out of that mess? I stopped looking at my physical reality in front of me and I started instead engaging on the future I had beyond me. I also stopped focusing on myself and my own pity party of my own stupid situations I got myself in, right? I stopped focusing on myself. I went from instead of how am I going to fix my situation to how can I help other people fix their situations? The more I focus on other people, the less sad I was about myself. You ever see people like, I'm just so depressed. You see people like this all the time, right? I'm just so sad. I'm just, I can't even get out of bed. And I'm not here to debate you on science of depression or nothing. I'm not here to do that. What I'm here to tell you is I've been there before too. And you want to know how I shifted out of that situation? I started focusing on other people. I started doing good things for other people. I started talking to people one at a time to try to really get to the heart of what they needed in their life and business. And if there was a lesson someplace in my old mind, right, that I could pull out to help that person get to the next level. Because I had realized that even though I hadn't succeeded in network marketing yet, I had conquered so much in my early life that I could speak for days just on that material alone. Now, I, I know I'm not alone when I say that our struggles are what help us become better leaders. Because how do, how do you raise your children the same way, right? Listen, kid, don't go down that path because I've been down that path. And guess what? It's a dead end, right? How many times have we told our own children this? And of course, they don't listen to us. But that goes without saying. But we have these lessons under our belts that we can share with people. So whether you're a 100K, a 200K, a 5K, an executive, you have learned something in this, whether it's in this industry or not, you've become an expert at something. And because of that, you're eligible to teach somebody something. And if you can teach somebody something, you can add value to their lives. And even if you've only learned all the millions of ways of how to not do it, there's value even in that. Because I could tell you all the times that I failed. <laughs> so many times I got to the point where I was sick of success. Like flat out, I got to the point, I, I'm just going to be broke. <laughs> like I'm so sick of this. I don't even care anymore. Like I got to that point. That was my rock bottom. Like I teared up and cried every time I thought about becoming successful. Because I almost didn't even want the hope anymore. Wow. You guys ever been there? I have failed so many times in network marketing that I don't want to have hope because hope hurts. Have you ever been there before? Yes. I've been there. And I'm here to tell you that this, just because you've had a past negative experience, your mind has associated that experiment, experience with negativity. But we are allowed, we have the ability to rewrite the associations in our own mind. We have the ability to reprogram our own experiences, whether they're past, present, or future. So it's all about perspective. You can look at all the ways that you failed, or you can find all the ways that didn't work to, to this point. You can look at the negative things that have happened to you in your life or in your business, or you can think about 
what you have accomplished and how far you have grown since you started in this industry. You can't tell me that you're sitting here watching me and you've not grown not a little bit since you've been in this industry. This is a personal growth industry. And literally the size of your success is the, is the direct correlation to the, success, to the size of your personal growth, right? That's, that's a hard one for me. I had to figure that one out the hard way. I realized that I wasn't putting in the right information in my mind to be able to help people the right way. So I ask you guys, what are you reading now? What are you putting into your mind now? What is in your, your, your subconscious? What is in your consciousness now? Because whatever you're putting in is what's coming out. You know, people say to me all the time, how do you just get on live and start talking like that? I read a lot. I put a lot of information in my head all the time. Because if I didn't, I would have nothing to say. You guys haven't even got to my notes yet. I've been just talking. <laughs> <laughs> so... I guess I'll start looking at these notes. We've got all night. Some good stuff in We've here. got all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I already said all that. Man, I just memorized this and I didn't even know. Okay, so there's a quote that I really liked from Vince Lombardi that I think you guys will relate to. The joy is in creating, not maintaining. Vince Lombardi said that. The joy is in creating, not maintaining, right? So we may have got to this level and then we went into management mode, right? Oh my God, I have a team. Hurry, stop recruiting, start babysitting, <laughs> right? Because now I got all these messages of all these people and they're all asking me questions that they could easily find on the website, but I'm gonna just take the time and answer them anyways and try to deliver all of the information myself so I'm in management mode and now this is taking up so much time that I don't have time to go produce. And because I don't have time to produce, my volume may be dropping. Because my volume is dropping, my team is no longer respecting me. Ouch, that hurt. But guess what? The third level of leadership is production. Production, right? So we have to be per personally accountable with our own production. You know, I told my team when I was raising them, I, I call them like raising them little children. They're little chickens and I had to hatch them <laughs> and grow them into big chickens or whatever. Eagles, not chickens, eagles. But um, yeah, I told my people that you're, you need to get 10 people a month, no matter what. And if you're not on the leaderboard, I ain't even talking to you. <laughs> like straight up. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to talk, if you, if you, I don't see you on the leaderboard, then how do I know you're actually building your business? I, I need, to, I need to see your production. I would do it myself. I would go get 10 people myself. Now I know it's not people based now, it's volume based now. So maybe this is a thousand new volume a month or 10,000 a new volume, whatever your personal goal is, you set that for yourself. Okay. But at the time it was people based, right? And so I said, I'm going to go get my 10, whether that's affiliates or customers, you're going to go get your 10. And if you go get your 10, I'm going to give you 11 through 20 because I'm going to keep recruiting. Some of my people didn't have leadership yet. They never even actually managed a team yet. So you want to know what I did? I put them in the hot seat as fast as I could. I took them straight out of that comfort zone. I said, great, you got your 10 people for the month. I'm going to start throwing referrals at you left and right. Get ready to juggle. And I, and I, I was serious. I put them in a three-way chat. And I said, Susie, meet Megan. Megan is a, is a top leader. She didn't have a rank yet, right? So she was a top leader. Uh, <laughs> she, she's a top leader in our company. She's very knowledgeable in CBD and in network marketing. And she can answer all your questions. And you know what? I'm also going to be here too. So if there's something that she can't answer, I'm here to help you as well. Please meet. And I would put them in this situation. And now she's on the spot. She has a live one. She's got to figure out what to do. And after five to 10 of those, she had a team. And now all of a sudden she had to, and I'm saying she, cause this is what I did to Megan, right? <laughs> it's like a few people on my team, but I put her in that situation and now she had a team and now she had to lead. And I'm like, what are you reading now? Right? What lessons are you giving them? What have you taught them? What have you learned so far? 
you, you know how to get to the first rank, the second rank, and the third rank, so you better start teaching people how you did that. And it wasn't all referrals, but what happened was she got a couple referrals from me, and then her confidence grew, like, astronomically, because of the repetition, because of the exercises that I was putting her in. Before we had three-way chats, I don't know if y'all are old enough, you guys seem like you are, you know about life before Facebook Messenger, mm-hmm. right? When we had to do three-way calls, remember that? <laughs> okay, do we still do those? I still do them. Okay, when NBC first launched, you guys, uh, we weren't doing, I think there was, yeah, there was Facebook, but it wasn't like we were using it like we do now. And when I first started building NBC, I didn't have a check story. I didn't have a product testimonial. It was the first day we launched. I didn't have nothing, <laughs> right? The only thing I had was Josh's story because my upline didn't have a story yet. So I just skipped over him until I got all the way to Josh. And so I leveraged Josh's story. And I said, well, he's built a team of 50,000 something people. And now he's leading this company. And the reason he started this company is because he could not find a company out there that could pay the way that he can, that can launch the products the way that we can without pigeonholing ourselves to one industry or the other. And, you know, Chris, you asked me to talk about the five pillars. My phone calls in the beginning were all about the five pillars. I've talked about the people, the products, the comp plan, the system, the timing, right? And, and I said, you know what? But don't take it from me. I'm brand new. I just got here. I don't know anything about network marketing. Let me put you on the phone with him directly. Three-way call. After I edified the crap out of him, right? And then what does he do? right when I get on the phone, he edifies me back and said, Jen is an upcoming leader in our organization. She's going to be the next super affiliate. This is way before anybody even touched super. super. Nobody was even a 25K yet. I was selling three sprays, three. That was it, not six. Like we have so many products now. It boggles my mind that we don't have the creativity to go market them. We had three sprays and a comp plan. My first seven days in this business, I made almost $4,000. That beat Josh's record. His first month, he did $4,000 in his previous company as a rep. And you know, the only reason why I beat his record is because he built a comp plan that made it easy for me too. I don't think we realize how easy it is. In fact, we make this so complicated. You know, if you go to any other company, there's a million gotchas in the, in the binary. The binary is flush and start over, right? You get to a certain rank and then you got to graduate and now you got to start a whole new leg. We make it so easy. You can reach the top of the compensation plan with two legs. That's it. Just balance it out. That's all you got to do. You do that and you rank up. You rank up, you get more, more of the compensation plans paid out to you. So we can't lose the art of of not just prospecting, but onboarding our people correctly as well, right? Because that's being a good leader, is making sure we are downloading what we know to the person that comes in after us. We're paying it forward. We're giving them the knowledge of everything that we know, right? And it's not just motivating people. You know, I used to tell my people all the time, I said, I'm not here to motivate you. If you go to Jay-Z Marketing Mentorship Group, I'm pretty sure it says that in the pin post. I'm not calling you every day to wake you up out of bed. I'm not gonna call you and harass you to answer for a three-way call. I'm not doing that, this is your business. And if you're not showing up to it, then I'm not showing up for you, period. It's not my job to motivate you, it's your job to motivate you. This might be highly motivational, I don't know, but it's not my job to motivate you, it's your job to motivate yourself. And I set those expectations with my leaders early on. It is my goal, to get you guys up and running and out of my hair as soon as possible. Seriously, like I'm like trying to go from zero to 18 years old real fast. (laughs) Do you know what I'm saying? You know, we say we enjoy our children. Yes, of course. When it comes to network marketing leadership, no man, I'm gonna try to get you as successful as I can so you can go branch out and be your own leader and do your own thing. The goal is to create independent business owners, not codependent business owners, that constantly need you for something. People are like, Jen, where's your team team chat? <laughs> where's, your, where's your team group? I don't have a team group. Well, how do you communicate with your leaders? I talked to my first line. 
I talked to about 10 people in my whole organization of over 10,000 something people. I talked to about 10. That's how tightened up we are, right? I reach out to them and I say, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. What's happening in your business. I have business IQ on everybody that's in my organization, right? What do you need help with? How can I support you? Let's get on a Zoom call. Let's do a team call. Let's do what we got to do, right? Do you guys have business IQ of your business? When's the last time you logged in, studied your volume, and where the hell it was coming from? That's important. You should always know where your runners are and where the people who are not running anymore are. It's important to know, okay? <laughs> it's important to know that information. I talked to a leader the other day, and I said, what is your team struggling with? And he said, I don't know. I said, well, if you don't know, then <laughs> that's why your team is struggling. <laughs> because you're not in the know. Like, you need to be in the know with these people. And you know what happens to people over time is their whys change. Like, I already hit that rank. I already got that ring. I already got that car. I already achieved this level. Uh, whatever their goals are, whatever their whys are, right? I already put my kid in, in the school I wanted to put them into. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing process of evolving our goals as well. Because again, it's about creating, it's not just maintaining. We have to get creative. We gotta think outside of the box and sometimes we gotta smash that box completely. You know, I can't tell you how many people told me how I was supposed to behave as a leader. Well, you're gonna have to go, you know, do all this stuff. You better, you gotta do this. You better start dressing up, Jen. <laughs> like you better put on those fancy pants you know everybody told me how i had to change in order to fit into the box of this industry and i said no i'll just change the industry so we have that ability to do that here too i'm not here to tell you how to do it because i believe every one of you guys is creative enough you're going to figure that out on your own i'm here to tell you what to do okay and you can decide how you're going to execute that yourself. I'm going to give you, I wrote down one of these pages. Here's the steps. Ready? Here's the steps. Now take it I'm slow. Gonna, Daisy, can you I'm put this in the I'm going to tell you how, right? This is how you guys fill, you want to fill in the blanks here. I'm going to just tell you what, okay? And I'll say it slow. <laughs> Check your ego at the door. What do I mean by that? Before y'all get cranky with me. Your ego is your false sense of self, self, okay? It's your individuality. It's what makes us separate, right? If you look at it like this, right? Everybody's in their own little avatar, right? My avatar right now is wearing a lot of blonde fake hair. <laughs> That's my avatar right now. That's my ego. That's my sense of self, my individuality, right? But underneath all of that, we're all the same, right? Don't matter your race, your background, your religion, your politics, whatever you believe in, we're all the same, right? So when I say check your ego at the door, I mean that it's time to put ourselves on the same levels as our leaders that are struggling, okay? It's not me before team. It's not here I am at the top of the mountain, hurry up. It's where are you at right now? And let me go to you where you are so that we can get you through, so we can get you to the next breakthrough. Number two, be coachable. Be coachable. I know everybody thinks they're coachable. Every person I feel like in network marketing, always, they don't even write this one down. They don't even write it down because they're like, I'm coachable. Yeah, got it, check, next. But what we don't realize is all the old programming in our mind from years of conditioning is what's stopping us from being actually coachable. It's our old habits. It's the old paradigm we've been living in for so long. That's what makes us not coachable. Because your leader, right, Chris, or myself in this situation on this call, right, I may tell you to do something that's uncomfortable. 
like uh, call a prospect or do something that you don't want to do because you're afraid of rejection or how you're going to look or failing, right? Fear of failure is a real thing. And deep down, you know, that issue is only just a self-worth issue because you don't think you're worthy of success. So we do everything we can subconsciously to sabotage it. So when I say be coachable, I mean be coachable. If I give you a whole book list, there's a reason for that. Because one's gonna help you get out of your own way. One's gonna help you identify your strengths. One's gonna help you identify your weaknesses. One's gonna help you be a better leader. One's gonna help you think about the world in a completely different way. And it's going to open your mind to new ideas you never thought existed. That's what I mean when I say be coachable. So there's the difference. I hope you wrote that one down. Number three, keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. Okay, don't complicate it. Okay, we've, we've been trained to complicate things and I'm gonna tell you why. We've been trained to think that success is hard because it took us either forever to get there or it took us, maybe we've never even been there yet, so it's still foreign to us, right? We've been trained to think that you have to work for 50 years in order to get a break for the rest of your life, right? We've been trained that success is hard, so that prevents us from keeping it simple because there are several people on this call that I'm seeing that have reached a level of success that I recognize. Ron Deering, you're one. And Ron, would you say that everything you learned to get to success was very complicated, that you needed to go to get a PhD to learn or spend 50 years studying? Hold on, hold on, I'm unmuting him. Ron, unmute yourself. No, I, I, I totally agree. It, it's simple and following instructions. And we complicate it. We make it harder than it is. We do. We really do. Because we look for like the deeper meaning on things. And then we, we never take the action it takes to just do it right the first time and follow those steps. Here's the thing is success has already happened in this industry, right? Would you agree? Yes. Success has already happened in this company, right? Yes. So that means you can do it too. You just have to follow the right steps that the person took to get there. That's it. The road's already been paved. You just have to go down that right one instead of veering off into the bushes thinking that you have found a shortcut. Because let me tell you, there's no shortcuts. And the longer you spend looking for shortcuts, it's just going to get you more lost. Just stay on the path. It's been proven. Okay. Number four, I don't have like a title for this one. I just have a whole lot of little other things to put under it. So number four, I guess, is maybe the how. But you're going to also interpret that how you interpret that, right? Take action. Some of us are, we get so freaked out about the work that we spend our whole life preparing to work. Do you see this? Like, the, I have a leader in my organization. I'm not going to tell you who she is, but I'm just going to tell you this. This is what she says. Well, I can't, um, I can't put, I can't build in this market yet because we don't have a PDF in that language yet. Okay. So <laughs> she's like, well, I can't do that because we don't have, uh, the PowerPoint is not available for that yet. Or I can't do that because there's a typo on our website or she's constantly looking for ways to not work right? Because it's so easy to attach ourselves onto excuses. Well, I can't, I can't sell this product yet because there's a new one coming. Or I can't, you know, do it this way. All that is, is just filling up your calendar with excuses. That's all it is. It's literally like, I've seen, you know, there's this Dale, uh, what's his name? Dale Cal Calvert, I believe. I saw him live once. He's, he's an industry trainer. And he was joking about this and it really hit home for me because I realized I was this way. And he's like, some of us, we're about to call a lead and we're sitting there and we're like organizing our papers and we're organizing our paper clips. And we gotta, oh, I gotta, I gotta clean my whole office first before I call this person. But you know, as a matter of fact, I gotta clean my whole damn house. Like before I call this person, like we start, we start coming up with all kinds of crazy excuses to avoid just doing the work. You gotta take action. 
And here's, here's the secret, ready? It's gonna be messy at first. It's gonna be ugly at first. You are gonna say the wrong thing. You will make a fool of yourself. You will be rejected. You will be laughed at, okay? You will be called a pyramid scheme scammer. You will be called all the things, right? Depending on where your level of your network is will determine the reactions that people give you, right? If you're calling from a lead list, you're gonna be called a telemarketer, even if they opted in on your website, okay? So <laughs> let me just tell you, it's messy at first, and that's normal, okay? That's supposed to be that way, because every call that you make, every prospect that you, that you reach out to, you learn just a little bit of a lesson each time, right? And now you tweak your approach just a little bit differently. And you know, I can't tell you guys, I used to sell insurance and uh, I used to flip through the phone book in order to find leads. Phone book, remember those? They're yellow and white, right? Mm -hmm. I flipped through the phone book to find leads to sell insurance, which is something nobody wants to ever talk about. And I, I used to drink like two energy drinks before getting on the phone because my my psychiatric energy <laughs> was so bad that I needed fake sugar energy to get me through to that call. Okay, like, every, I mean, some of y'all, I need a coffee. I need to make a cup of coffee first before I call this person. Maybe, I don't know. Do what you gotta do. I don't drink those things anymore, of course. But this was many years ago. But I had to just muscle through it because I knew that if I didn't call the people or message them or however we're communicating now that makes sense, the answer was always no, no sale, no sale. And I would write it down on my pages. Like I would have my list of people that I needed to call. And I didn't want to write a zero next to them because I didn't even try. I wanted to put 500 PV they just ordered. Yes, perfect, 200, 60, whatever it is, right? And, and maybe you, you gotta celebrate the small wins, you know? Like maybe you just sold a spray today, but thank God you got, you, you got over your fear of calling them, right? Celebrate the small wins. And just know that it's okay to, to have grace with yourself in the process. You don't have to have it all figured out overnight, although that'd be really great if we could, right? But unfortunately, this is a profession that takes a level of skill that we have to work on in order to get good at it. We have to practice in order to be good at it. I mean, I was, I was not a good speaker. You guys can find YouTube videos of me from 2014 and you'll laugh. Embarrassing, <laughs> okay? Like I said, um, all the time. I was super nervous, so sweaty. Like, it's not pretty. I did not wanna be a public speaker ever. What the hell happened? My company blew up and ta-da, I'm a freaking public speaker, okay? <laughs> and that's what happens to us in network marketing, right? We're like, okay, I'm just gonna refer a few people and make a little money over here, but I'm sure as hell not doing no Facebook Live. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, you will. And now you know that, and I've told you. And if you're sitting there and you're sweaty because you're nervous because I just said that, now you know what you have to do. And now you know how to get out of your own damn comfort zone because there it is right there. Take action. Hey, Jenna, right? can we call number four, take massive action? Yes, we can call it that. Okay. Let's call it that. You've got to have a burning desire. This sounds all basic. I know, but I'm going to explain it in a different way that you understand. All right. Uh, if you do not have a burning desire, it's going to be so easy to talk yourself out of it. Easy. For me right now, I'm pregnant. I do not have a burning desire to get my ass to the gym. I don't. And it's a problem <laughs> because I know I should go. I know it's the right thing to do. Even if I just do yoga, so I'm easy. I know I should do it, but I don't have a burning desire, so I easily talk myself out of it, right? And some of us, maybe we're not hurting enough. Maybe our check is too good. I've seen this too. I've seen it all. I really have. Maybe you don't know what is your desire. What, what will fuel that fire when the fire starts going down? You know you have to be personally accountable to the fire that's within you. It's your job to fan that flame. Nobody else's. 
No one's going to call you and light you up. Nobody. It's going to be you. How do you get yourself into that mindset though? Because that's all it is. It's a mindset shift. That's all it is. Here's how. For me, you write down what works for you. I have to shut my phone off. I got to put on a book or I got to read a book or I got to disappear for a day. I need to get serious about my own personal development. I need to dive into education and I need to reinforce my thoughts again because it's so easy to let doubt crush our burning desire and fear. That's what I have to do. I, gotta, I go to the spa for whatever. I gotta get my nails done, my hair done, whatever. I'm out, bye. I'm taking care of myself, self-care day. <laughs> like, that's what I do because it helps me get my mind right, right? So whatever you do, maybe that's just playing your favorite song. Maybe it's going for a drive. Maybe it's spending time with somebody you like instead of somebody you don't like. Some of y'all like, I don't really like my husband, but he's here, so we're going to drive together. No, go for a drive yourself. Go hang out with somebody that lifts you up, okay? And you may have to go to a different house to find that person <laughs> that lifts you up, and that's fine, okay? But do what you got to do to fuel that flame. Because if you're not busy flaming your own flame, your team is going to die out. Okay, they're, they're not going to know what to do to take care of their own fire. So take care of yourself first and then teach your people how to do the same. Consistency is huge. It doesn't work if you go, if you go to the gym sometimes, right? <laughs> like that's what my problem is. I go sometimes. <laughs> so I get sore and I don't see results. So it's just an uncomfortable cycle for me. All right. But we have to stay consistent in our business because it's not the big actions we do sometimes, it's the little actions we do all the time. It's the little actions we do all of the time. I don't even have the opportunity to not build my business anymore at this point because I feel so obligated to help the next person. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I log in every day looking for people that are looking for me. And if you're not out there actively engaging people because in your mind you know this is a rescue mission, then you're not being consistent in your business. You should be consistently looking for people who are looking for you because they're out there, let me tell you. They are out there. And if you've got anybody in your business with a product testimony, you know what I'm talking about. This is a rescue mission. Accountability. Now, some of us like to go to the gym with a partner for accountability, okay? Here's what I'm gonna say about network marketing. You gotta be personally accountable to yourself. Ain't nobody's gonna do it for you. Nobody's gonna check in on you. Nobody's gonna make sure that you're calling your leads or, or building your business. This is your business. If you went and started a restaurant, nobody's gonna say, hey, Jim, did you uh, wash all the dishes today? Did you? You know, do all the things you needed to do to, to build your business. Did you order enough waffles or whatever the heck, right? <laughs> Nobody's going to be keeping an eye on you, making sure you're doing the right things. This is your business. You're the CEO. You are the business owner. So you got to put in that plan in place. And you got to be personally accountable to your own goals and wishes because you know that you deserve the success that comes out of that. You gotta follow up with people, but before that, you gotta plant seeds. This is very much like a harvesting kind of business. Now, I don't know not one plant that grows in one day. Some of them grow faster than others, correct. Some of them have less resistance to soil and sunlight than others do, right? So we have to consistently be planting seeds. Now, some are gonna grow fast, some are gonna grow slow, and some are gonna not grow at all. Right? So that means that your business should always be in different stages. Your prospecting should always be in different stages. You should have some that are just ripe and ready for harvest. Takes maybe one or two more exposure, exposures to seal that deal, right? You have some people that are close and getting there to making that decision or to going all in. You've got people that are brand new, still asking questions, still wanna know, you know all the things before they, they even go to the next step. This business is all about exposures. So when you're planting seeds, it's to go from one exposure to the next, right? 
your very first exposure should be uh, just building the friendship and building that relationship without having the sale in mind, right? You're just reaching out to them because you guys have something in common or something that you see in that person you know you can help them with, right? Our job is just to be crazy note takers of these people and fact finders. You know, I use this example, I realize it's a, not probably a great example considering our industry, but I use it anyway. But just imagine you're the doctor, right? And when you're talking to somebody new for the first time you never talked to, your goal as the doctor is to get all the symptoms, all the different things that are happening in this person's life, right? Before you can make any recommendation, before you can make a diagnosis, right? So some of us in our prospecting efforts, we just go, boom, you need surgery. <laughs> like, I heard one thing, surgery for you, <laughs> you get this, you get that. And we're like trying to sell these people right off the bat, right? But we have to slow down because we gotta really hear what they're saying and hear what they actually need. We gotta be expert fact finders. Because I'll tell you why. When I tell people how much money I make, I lose people. They're like, yeah, right. Like nobody believes me, right? So it doesn't help me to have that as my pitch going forward. That's just going surgery, right? It helps me to understand where that person's coming from. They may say, my goal is to make 500 bucks a month. That's all I need. Like that would be fantastic. That would pay for my whole car payment and my groceries and I'll be all set. Like that's all I need. I wouldn't know that if I never got that out of them from the beginning, right? And people always worry about how do you close the sale? If you ask enough questions and you give enough good answers, there won't ever be a close at the end. They will just naturally be wanting to be involved with whatever Can you you're doing. That again? Can you say what you just said again? People are freaked out about closing the sale, but you don't have to close the sale if you gather enough information earlier in the conversation and yeah. you give them the right answers because you're making proper recommendations. You're the consultant, right? So like if I'm talking to Chris, I don't know anything about your, your personal life or anything. So if I'm getting to know you for the first time, I'm gonna to try to figure out your pain points. That's my goal in mind. I'm gonna figure out what is your triggers, your pain points, because I know that's gonna motivate you to make a decision later on. If you're like, I need to make money right now. Boom, okay, I know how to pitch you now, right? I know how to shift into that conversation or I, I need you know, this product or this product or whatever. Then I know what recommendations to make. And that means th th you're gonna feel like I care about you, right? Because I'm listening. And I'm actually giving you good guidance. That's not just based on a sale. And if you do that with people in your prospecting efforts, they're going to feel like they trust you. And that relationship is going to be, you know, mature much faster than other relationships that you didn't take the time to do that with. So it's all about planting those seeds. And eventually you'll have a harvest. Like sometimes this happens in network marketing, which is amazing when this happens. Everybody's ready for harvest at the same time. You ever have like a lean month and then the next month it's like everybody's like ready to go. Like that's the way it works in network marketing. And, and nine times out of 10, all the people that are ready to go are people you talk to months before that. They're not people that you just talked to today. So now you understand that our job is to be the farmer, right? Planting seeds, watering, nurturing. You cannot make withdrawals from people until you make deposits, right? So if, the, if you're like looking at your list of your friends and you're like, I haven't talked to any of them in four years. And then the first thing you say out of your mouth is you want to join my business. That's an empty bank account that you're trying to withdraw from. You got to put deposits in that relationship before you try taking anything out of it. Right. All right. Next. Also obvious, but write it down. <laughs> Never quit. Never quit. That is something that we don't take seriously enough because here's why i don't know about y'all but i got really good at quitting things i didn't like early on in my life i don't like it i quit i worked at the grocery store for two weeks i didn't like it i quit my mom's like you're a mess like you need to just commit to something <laughs> like quit getting hired everywhere <laughs> like my resume was like 10 pages long i could get a job anywhere because i had so much experience um, but I didn't like it. I quit. I had a bad experience. I quit. 
I got used to being a quitter because I, I, I didn't like being in my uncomfort, right? But in this industry, if you quit, what happens is, is you make a lateral move to go to another company. So if you're like a 50K over here, over here, you're probably gonna be like a 10K because you're starting all the way over and you're not gonna bring everybody with you. Just usually the math doesn't work out for you that way. You're making a lateral move. So if you're quitting, you're actually hurting yourself by having to start all the way over again. And it seems so obvious, but let me tell you something about quitting, you guys, because this is the first company that I couldn't quit. You wanna know why I couldn't quit it? Because that would be very embarrassing for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest with y'all. There were times when I wanted to quit, okay? Early on in our business, we had serious growing pains before y'all got here, okay? Shipping was hard. Customer service was even harder. Okay, we had three sprays and nothing else. Like, we were trying to go into 200 countries our first day in business. You want to see growing pains, please rewind <laughs> to 2014 and 15. I would have loved to quit then. 2015, y'all, I filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, I killed it my first, second, first month, second month, third month, dead. <laughs> okay, I, I only knew how to be a networker of new launch momentum. I didn't have any of the skills it took to create my own momentum. You see people hopping around from deal to deal because they suck at network marketing. I'm just being real. And the reason is because they rely on new product and new launch momentum. They need a new thing, a new shiny thing in order to, to build their business. I had to learn how to build my business from nothing. Out of nothing and out of nowhere. It can be done if you have the will to do it. If you have the, the commitment within yourself to develop the skills you need to create the fire within yourself and the momentum in your team, you have the ability to create these things. You are an all powerful person. And all you literally have to do is get in alignment with the success that you wanna have. That's it. You wanna know why you haven't hit success yet? You're out of alignment with it. You gotta check yourself. Where are you out of alignment? Because if you don't have a, a million dollar mindset, you're never gonna have a million dollar income, period. So how, what do you have to do to create that shift within yourself so that you don't have to rely on a new launch to, to save face? You know what's real? I'm gonna tell you what's real. Nobody respects the leader that leaves. We respect the leader that stays and that fights through the hard times. We respect the leader that stays on the boat behind the wheel in the middle of a storm, not the one that jumps off the back and says, peace. Right? Anybody can drive a sailboat without wind. Well, actually you can't, you know what I'm saying? Anybody can drive a sailboat with calm waters, right? When, when the skies are clear and the sun is shining, anybody can do that. That's not what leadership is. Leadership is in the middle of a freaking tornado or hurricane is being able to guide your people through the chaos and help them understand this is just part of the journey. And I didn't ever promise you it was gonna be easy. I told you it was gonna be worth it. Does that make sense, you guys? So when I say never quit, I mean, yes, it's gonna be hard sometimes. This is entrepreneurship. This is not a job. Like, you don't just sign up and get a paycheck. It doesn't work like that over here you're gonna be paid in the direct proportion to the efforts that you're putting in, the right efforts that you're putting in. That's the beauty of this business because you can literally write your own paycheck. Here's the next one. And I'm just gonna end it in the next couple minutes because I know we all gotta go, but no drama. Save the drama for your mama or something. Bingo! Somebody that's not on your team. Okay, you want to have drama, keep that shit quarantined. So outside of your business, I got all kinds of drama in my life. Y'all, like first world problems, so I'm not even going to tell you because it's embarrassing. 
But <laughs> what I'm telling you is I don't air my drama out to my whole team, you know, or my whole organization. Or if, if I'm questioning our own ingredients, you guys think I don't? I do. I care. I do care. When I go to corporate and ask them, what, what was our plan here? I need to know because I got to tell everybody else. You're making me look stupid. <laughs> tell me the answer. <laughs> right? I don't put the negativity to my team and to my organization. Even if I have doubts, even if I have fears, even if I have questions and curiosities about the direction that we're heading, that, that doesn't mean I'm gonna put negativity out into to all of you guys. I'm not gonna bring cancer to an organization that's thriving. Why would you do that? That's craziness. That's what drama does. It just distracts people. It diverts their energy onto focusing on something that's not gonna grow their business. It's a complete waste of time, period. People ask me, why do you have no team chats? Because of drama. <laughs> like, that's why. Team chats are stupid. <laughs> like, I'm just telling you. Because you know why? You have 10 positive people and one a-hole on the team. You know who you are if you're the a-hole. I'm sorry. <laughs> Call your own self out. If you're the one negative a-hole on the team, that's like, what about this? In the whole team chat, okay, you just poisoned nine other people. Like, why would you do that? I understand your own drama, but don't take your drama to other people and ruin their chance of success. They're working on their mindset over here. You're making it hard. Keep that quarantined until you get yourself right, right? Mm. Positive vibes only. That's it, right? Mm. If you got a concern or issue, take it to your upline. Go to Chris. He'll come to me. We go through the appropriate channels and we get things done. That's how you deal with it. You don't go downline. Positivity is always downline, always. So I'm going to end it with that. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Now, I know you wanted to ask a couple questions. I'm couple. okay with that. I can take a couple questions. You sure? Are you I guys good with staying on just a couple minutes extra? Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> you just blew my freaking mind. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, real quick, if you don't have to go get the kids right now. You got a couple minutes? Okay, so I just wanted to, real quick, I'm gonna ask you something. I just need a quick answer if you can. A lot of people have fear and they have insecurities, right? They need to reach out to people, they need to talk to people. And my thought process when I was, got in this and I was doing this was people I believe need to look at this like we are helping people. Our product literally changes lives. So when you're going out and recruiting and talking to people, you're actually helping somebody. Yeah. That, that should help overcome the fear and the insecurities. But we have a lot of it. I mean, it, it's the biggest, in my opinion, it's the biggest holdback for a lot of people having success. Yeah, and there's a reason for that. And that's because we live in a society that deems success as like evil. And we, have, we live in a society where MLM is a pyramid. And we live in a society where it's not right to make money off of our friends, right? We have this like weird mentality about it. Go to Japan, go to China. Nobody acts like that over there. They're like, uh, I don't care. Like we're just all, I'm gonna tell you about it and I have no fear whatsoever. That's why those network marketing teams grow nut, like nuts over there because right. they don't have that stigma. They don't have that mindset. For us, it's literally just our own fear is, is usually rooted in, in self doubt within our own selves right so we're worried about how we're going to be judged as an entrepreneur or as a network marketer we're worried about breaking through the the stigmas or having to answer the tough questions but for me this is the turning point for me first you got to get right you got to get serious about network marketing it's a real profession it's a legitimate industry it's a 180 billion dollar industry and it's not going anywhere you know and it is a real profession Okay, it's the same as have, if you're a teacher or a police officer or, you know, a doctor or whatever you do in your other, maybe you have other job, right, right now. It's a profession, right? And you're not doing anybody a disservice by reaching out to them. Now, some of us in the back of our mind are like, well, what if they buy something and then they feel like, well, they're on the hook every month for their order, but they never make any money. But again... 
Our goal isn't to put people on the hook for product every month that they don't want. Our goal is to match them to the products that they need, that they would buy regardless, because they need it. Like, in the beginning, you guys, like, I, I had zero fear because I had so much conviction about my own personal testimony. Like, I was literally just, like, on fire. I was curious because I thought, I honestly thought it was a placebo effect with myself. I was freaking out. Like, this is probably not true. Like, I need to find out. So I got the product out to so like hundreds of people. And you know what happened? I got hundreds of testimonies back. This is before HempWorks was a network mark, part of a network marketing company. Some of y'all don't know that. The origins of HempWorks was not network marketing. It was just a product for people to buy. We only had customers. That's it. The first eight weeks of HempWorks' life was not in my daily choice. Did y'all know that? It was me talk, talk, talking to customers. It was me reaching out to people, trying to get testimonies back to see if I was onto something or not. Because originally Josh told me no, he wasn't gonna put CBD in his MLM. Because he said that was crazy. He said that's high risk on top of high risk. There's no way we can do it. And I said, fine, I'm doing it anyway, because I know that people need this and I need to create a platform so that they can get it. Eight weeks later, my, my orders went from five orders a day to over a hundred orders a day. First eight weeks in HempWorks before it was network marketing. Wow. You want to talk about these other CBD oil companies popping up on the scene, trying to capitalize on an industry they know nothing about? What? Look at our origins. Our origins was a sick person, me, discovered something and then decided to get it out to people without comp plan attached to it. Why did we end up merging? Because I was about to get shut down. You wanna, you wanna know the truth? My merchant account was about to get shut down. Stripe, PayPal reached out and said, you got two weeks and we're turning your website off. And I said, hell no, <laughs> like we need to find another way because people need this product. I felt so convicted that I had to do this. So I reached out to Josh again and I said, how can we save this deal? Like I need to save this because people need this product and not, a, not everybody knows about it yet. You know, like I'm just barely getting started. And he said, maybe there's a way I can do it because I had proof of concept. Finally, I could prove that there was demand. In May, Hempwork started in March 2017. In May 2017, we merged together. And he already had a database of people, right? So it became easy to just get that product out there to people. But we weren't killing it before that, you know? But from Hempworks in May 2017, our numbers doubled every single month for the rest of the year because of a product. Not because we were expert network marketers at the time, uh, we weren't, I'm just telling you right now, like I was a 50K affiliate. I was still trying to figure it out. I was still studying, I was still reading. I was still going through my own personal struggles and dealing with an illness that was magically getting better. <laughs> so I'm just telling you guys that because it is a rescue mission. And if you don't have that mindset when you go out to people that you know that you're doing the right thing, that you are the solution that they're looking for, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Change the way you speak about the business in your own mind so that it changes the way you speak about it in person. Wow. All right, guys, real quick here. We're gonna do three, we're gonna pick three people real quick. It's got, everybody's wiping their eyes. Way to go. You got our whole team <laughs> crying. Thanks, buddy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it wasn't because of those things. I'm going to say it was because of your conviction. And I know that everybody on here thanks you. And we are so grateful. I'm going to get emotional. We're so grateful that you didn't give up and you didn't quit. That you were going to get this done no matter what. So, um, so if three people could, um, I'm sorry, I'm emotional. You want to? Hey, sorry. Sure. All right, guys. So if you have any questions, go and raise your hand. So I can try to see. Bless his heart. <laughs> All right. No one has a question. Wow. Stacy, unmute, babe. Hey, I don't have a question. I just need to tell you, thank you, Jenna, 
for pushing forward and getting this out to the masses because this has changed my life on so many different levels. I have more confidence today than ever in my life because this company stands for the best of the best and bringing out the best in everybody. So I thank you so much. Thank you so much for your words. Appreciate that. Jan, I think Lily has a question. All right. Hi, Lily, unmute. Hello, Jenna. I, um, I almost got emotional myself. Thank you. I, from the bottom of my heart. Um, I, my, my only question is, um, gosh, you, you, you really gave us so much information here. Um, I can resonate with what you said about um, sharing and spending that quality time with each person. I'm, I feel like I'm really doing that. But sometimes I, 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 I get antsy because I don't feel like um, I'm reaching uh, to enough people. And I get, um, I get really antsy about it. Sorry. It's just that um, I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm, I want to go through the numbers. And I don't know how. I, I guess I feel like I'm, not, like I'm going too slow. I don't know if that's normal but help me. Don't, I mean, it's, it's one thing to set your own personal goals, right? But absolutely do not compare yourself to anybody else's success because you never know in this business. You may meet the next person that takes you to super affiliate tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like while we say it's a numbers game, it's honestly a right person and quality of person game more than anything. So it's not necessarily about trying to get as many people as we can, although that would be nice, right? It's just about getting in alignment with the right people. That's what's most important is being in alignment with that person. So for you, don't have the end result in mind. And I'm not saying don't visualize your goals. Yes, that's your long-term vision and those are your goals. But don't let it hinder the relationships that you're building because you're nervous about the outcome of what the relationship produces. Does that make sense? You're going to be there for that person regardless. And if you can help that person, fantastic. If you can't, then that's okay too. And it's okay to give ourselves grace as we go through our different prospects. And you know, it, I never had success in my warm market at all. And I burnt through my list like that. And uh, to be honest, I jumped from company to company early on in my network marketing career because I didn't know better, right? And I didn't have a list to build off of. So I had to go into my cold market. I had to go meet different you know, strangers, but that gave me a benefit because I got to be whoever I wanted to be. I didn't have to explain who I used to be growing up to my personal contacts anymore. My mentor told me, you wanna know what an expert is? It's a stranger from out of town. You ever try to tell your mom or somebody in your family something about like, you shouldn't eat that anymore because of this, this, and this, and they don't listen to you, right? But as soon as Dr. Oz says it, it's Bible, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. The expert's nothing more than a stranger from out of town. So we need to get into our cold market and make those new relationships and not, don't stress yourself out over the outcome of the relationship. Because at the end of the day, your only job is to put value into that person's life. That's it. And if it works that it's in alignment with your business, that's great. But if not, you're still just putting that value and, and you can't feel bad about that. Thank, thank you, Jenna. you. Thank, thank you, you Lillian. Well, last question is coming right here. Leslie, we're going to unmute, unmute yourself. There you go. Hey. Hey. Hey, I'm Leslie and Jenna, I probably will never see you again in person. So I just wanted to congratulate you on your sweet baby boy. Mwah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to take a team picture real quick here. We're going to unmute everybody. We're going to take a team picture real quick. So we've got three or two pages. So let us do this real quick here. Turn your camera on. If Turn you your can. cameras on right now, guys, at the bottom of your devices. Please, please, please. You're looking great, Jenna. You're looking great. <laughs> All right. So here we go for the first picture. That light. That light. All right. Hold on. Just turn off the light real quick. Whoa. Sorry. One, two, three. Hi. Okay, and then page two. And then I'm gonna unmute everybody and we're gonna tell her how much we love her. 
on <laughs> one, two, three. All right, go back to page one. We're gonna unmute, unmute everybody. Unmute, unmute. Okay, guys, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you Jenna. so much. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right, guys. Thank you, Chris and Jennifer. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. Thanks, Chris and Jenna. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much for everything. Thomas says hi. Buddy. Thank you. Okay. Night. You have one of these? Bye. That's it. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>